Rogue Trooper Redux is a remaster of the classic third-person shooter Rogue Trooper that was released back in 2006 for the PS2, Xbox Original, and PC. This new version of the game keeps the same gameplay with some minor controller refinements and some visual upgrades. Let's see how well this classic has aged in the last 11 years. Rogue Trooper Redux is based on and takes place within the universe of the 2080 comics. This game in particular is set on the planet New Earth, a post-apocalyptic looking Earth stuck between the gravitational pull of two suns and a black hole. On this planet, a civil war flourishes between the North and the Southerners. Millions of casualties have occurred through the use of biochemical weapons and so the Southerners started developing their own solution to ending the war. Super Soldiers These Super Soldiers are called GIs or Genetic Infantry, and they're soldiers created in a lab who are immune to poison and disease. In Rogue Trooper Redux, we play as Rogue, one of these Super Soldiers who along with the rest of his squadron are sent on a drop against the Nords. The plans fail completely though, as the traitor general from the Southerns leaks the plans over to the enemy, and so they get the jump on Rogue and the rest of his team. Rogue ends up being the only surviving soldier, though a few of his teammates are technically saved in the form of biochips. Each of these GI have a biochip that gives the soldier a few seconds upon dying to transfer their personality to a host of some sort. Rogue does this for three of his fellow squadron members, putting them in his helmet, his gun, and his backpack, making each of them AI enhanced. Now Rogue is dead set on finding the traitor of the group and avenging his fellow soldiers. It's a pretty interesting story with enough context and lore for even those of you who have never read the comics or are just playing the game for the first time through the remaster will still understand what the hell is going on. There's an extra section in the main menu that gives you a bit of extra background information on characters, enemies, and general lore as you progress through the main campaign. There's even a few comic panels in there too. As someone that didn't grow up reading the comic books, I still found the story pretty engaging. If you played the original Rogue Trooper, then you'll be familiar with this game, as it's pretty much the exact same game from a gameplay standpoint, at least outside some minor controller refinements. For those of you new to the game, Rogue Trooper Redux is a third-person cover shooter with some RPG elements thrown into the mix. At the start of the game, you'll play as Rogue with one of his squadron members whose bionic chip is now implanted on his gun. In these early sections of the game, the gameplay is primarily like an early cover shooter, before Gears of War was a thing. You'll fight your way through hordes of enemies as you make your way over to the yellow objective marked on your radar. As you progress through the game, your bionic chip squadron will slowly grow and open up your arsenal of tools. Your machine gun, for example, will be able to turn into a sentry gun controlled by your teammate, offering you some cover while you go work on opening a gate. Your backpack can launch C4 mines, and these are pretty useful for taking down hordes of enemies at once or tearing down larger scale armor suits that appear during the middle parts of the game. Then there's your helmet which can create holograms of yourself and they can work as decoys against enemies, perfect for situations where you need to take down faraway snipers. In general, these levels are all pretty linear. Move from one objective to another and take out the hordes of enemies blocking your way. The RPG-like elements come mostly in the form of inventory management and upgrades. After defeating an enemy, you can go towards their body and scavenge for currency that can be used to purchase new ammo and then upgrades. It's sort of a mixed bag. I didn't mind it at first, in fact I thought it was a pretty interesting way to handle the ammo and upgrades. However, there were a handful of times where I was fighting a horde of enemies or a giant mech enemy, only to run out of ammo. This means that mid-firefight, I had to pause the game and open up the inventory shop, buy more ammo, and reload. It completely disrupts the fast-paced nature of the gameplay during firefights. Even worse is that's assuming that you even have currency to buy ammo. Other times when you don't have enough currency, you'll have to dodge enemy fire as you try to loot the dead bodies around you without being shot. You do have a pistol with infinite ammo, but it's not necessarily the best weapon for combat. There are a few sections that take you away from the traditional cover shooting gameplay and it puts you on an on-rail section. In these moments, you take out groups of enemies, both individuals and inside of vehicles. It provides a pretty good challenge while also offering a nice change of pace for the gameplay. Now one of the biggest problems for the original game were the controls. They were pretty awkward to maneuver. There are a few changes in this remaster to help improve them, but honestly they're still pretty awkward at times. In the original game for example, you had to use the D-pad to switch weapons, but now that's moved over to the Y or the triangle button. It's better, but the game takes a bit to register the weapon switch. There's also context sensitive commands pretty much everywhere. If you lean too close to a wall, you'll automatically cover behind it. Sometimes this would work well, and other times it would just get in the way of me trying to set up a mine launcher, which in itself is a bit weird. The mine launcher works just like the grenade system in this game, where you press a button to initiate the throw, then have to manually choose the arch, and then press the button again to fire. 
Something more in line with first person traditional shooters would have been preferred by me as oftentimes setting up the arch meant I'd get myself shot while trying to get the angle of the arch right. So while the controls have changed a bit, like having an automated cover system, a better aim map control system, as well as a new over the shoulder view for shooting, it can still feel a bit awkward at times, making me wish this was a remake and not a remaster. Outside of the short 5 hour campaign is an online multiplayer mode. The multiplayer mode is essentially a 2-4 player online co-op mode, but it's pretty hard for me to judge as I literally couldn't find another reviewer playing the game online at the time. The co-op mode lets you choose the amount of lives at your disposal along with the map and difficulty, so you can kind of get a gist for what it's going to be like, but I can't really say if it's good or bad as I couldn't find anyone else to play on Steam. Being a remaster, of course this game is going to look better than the original game. It's not just a resolution bump though. Assets have been remodeled completely and look much better texture-wise, not just resolution-wise. Character models now have a higher polygon count, and the environments have a much appreciated dynamic lighting system that looks fantastic. Now while the game does look better, there's still some pretty awkward animations that definitely make the game stand out as a 2006 game. Takedown animations, for example, look a bit odd and unnatural along with how the characters aim. They sort of just twist their bodies rather than actually turn their entire body around to the direction they're aiming. Cutscenes stand out like a sore thumb too. They're pretty muddy at times, and more importantly, they run at 30 frames per second as compared to the 60 frames per second gameplay. They do look better than the original game, but they could still use some work. One particular scene that stood out to me was when the snipers were introduced in the gameplay. You can see them aim down and the laser coming out of the scope is pretty obviously a pasted PNG image that just stood out like a sore thumb. The audio in this remaster is pretty in line with the original, nothing really seems dramatically different than what I remember the original being like. The guns still sound pretty punchy and powerful, for some reason they sort of remind me of the assault rifle from Halo Combat Evolve. The music tracks from the original are in here too, and they provide the eerie atmosphere that's perfect for the desolated planet environment. It's very sci-fi like and completely fitting. Rogue Trooper Redux offers an interesting story for both fans and those who haven't read the 2080 comic. The world and universe this game takes place in is engaging and it made me want to go read the comics, though I do wish the game itself was a bit longer than 5 hours. The gameplay on the other hand I don't think has aged particularly well. Much in the sense where I once felt fondly about Sonic Adventure 2's gameplay and then I went back to go play it, I realized the controls hadn't aged well over time and this is a similar case. While this remaster has improved the controls from the original, some of this controller awkwardness is engraved into the gameplay, not just the button mapping. Visuals have been vastly improved from the original with better looking textures, assets, and character models, though the cutscenes could use a bit more cleaning. In the end, Rogue Trooper Redux is a nice looking remaster with a fascinating story, but with controls and gameplay that haven't aged too well. For the $25 digital price, or $30 price if you're looking at it physically, I'd say it's probably worth waiting for a sale. It's an interesting game, but not one I'd say you really have to go play right away. However, if you're still interested in checking out the game, it's available on October 17th on PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch for $25 digitally or $30 if you buy it physically. That does it for my review of Rogue Trooper Redux for the PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. If you do have any questions about the game that I may have missed in my review, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below or just hit me up on Twitter for a faster response. I do reviews on Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and if there are any games in the future you'd like to see me review, please let me know ahead of time and I'll do my best to cover those games. As always, thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and keep on gaming.